deeper, deeper levels of the human. I'm sharing them in this kind of way that was so different than uh, uh, what otherwise would be the case. Uh, and honoring of the beingness of who the person was, even though they might have been doing something a little difficult. That was always a human. Change this tone. It's the way he writes theory is also the way he works as an individual. Uh, but also the way he was as a person. He would make himself go through the exercises too when they little possible to pull off or facilitate. He uh, always felt himself, felt himself to be an equal with those who was aiding in the processes that he was uh, facilitating. It was a wonderful experience for someone like me who at that time was really interested in uh, understanding whatever it was to understand in a more serious way, someone like myself. Uh, I, would, I would also serve Don in other ways during the exercises if someone got in trouble or something like that. I would do certain modest things that was never at the expense of um, being myself a participant in whatever it was that Don was calling on us to do. I was to be considered for myself someone who underwent all the things. So I have to do it every, every weekend. I undergo the full line, line of experiences of the individual experiences each weekend. Uh, and he did do them every weekend, of course. They took an enormous amount of energy. You usually have another assistant, sometimes two, uh, to pull them off. I mean, you know, between. Uh, 12 and 16 or so participants, usually 17, 16, 17. The pub could handle too many. And people would bring their sleeping bags to sleep over. We'd all sleep over. And that's what we take a lot of furniture. Uh, and we also bring in uh, uh, several massage tables, which would be folded up in the evening. So we could have the sleeping bags in the little bedroom as well as it could fit them all in the little right? so living room, dining room, kind of space. Once the furniture was taken out, it could be used. But it couldn't really fit everyone. But uh, the little bedroom, it could fit them all. Uh, 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 I thought that was an un unreasonable life. I suppose that's why I thought I could cement that what became then like this book, Men Loving Men, for my master's thesis at the school. So it was a big shock when the school said no to me, that they did not accept this. Way of being, even though I was trying to justify it, and uh, it was a, a, a developed, it was a more developed view of the way I wanted to present it at that time to the school than my original proposal had been. And where I was more, in my original proposal I was more emphasizing the uh, the study of gay men's sexual practices, which I saw as much less meaningful than an actual uh, study of what those practices were, because of the actually doing them which then became like this sex manual, so to speak. But with this historical quality, so that it was historically rooted and grounded, and, uh, with an attitude to match that, uh, so to speak, by uh, way of how I was feeling growingly influenced by this direction. The sisters weren't, weren't going to go for that. Uh, in fact, they didn't, they didn't like that at all. They said, no, they weren't going to have that at all. If I was going to graduate, I'd have a whole new master's thesis. This is the end of 1974. So I was having a lovely time in this lovely world until like that, that happened. And all of a sudden, what, what am I going to do now? If I want to graduate, I have to come up with a number of ways to step out. And for those of you who uh, I've told the story to, you were aware of what that happened was that uh, seemingly coincidentally, I got in trouble with my partner, my lover of the time, Jody, who decided to go back to his uh, wife, his young wife, and two little children. Believe me. <laughs> this is by Brown October, November of that year. Which, that to me was a, was a new life, a, 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 a gay life like that. And he left me too. I was pretty despondent then. What was I going to do? If I wanted to graduate from school, there was no way I was going to salvage this master's thesis I had formulated for the past several years and worked my butt off on. And at the same time, you know, my partner, uh, I chased him off or he'd left or whatever it was, I had to figure it all out, was gone. Uh, and uh, back to, as I've described to you, he did have a, a 
wife and two children, and he went back to them and then uh, left his uh, life with me, uh, which had been going on for about a year and a half at that point. Uh, and I was very despondent. I was just really beside myself with this ghoulish, with awful feeling of, why well, live? <laughs> And it was really terrible, and uh, I didn't know what I was going to do, and I was very despondent, just kind of, I remember I was there every some day, this place where I was living at the time. I was, it was, there was no one else around. I was in this living room, and then the TV was on, and it was showing up the TV, television was on. I wasn't paying any attention to it. It just happened to be on, because I was despondent. And it was showing the show, and the show became the story of Frankenstein. And it was this TV version that had been whipped up for the television, which I didn't know at the time. They were, it was just coincidental. They were showing it. Um, it was this TV version of Frankenstein, uh, uh, which I later found out would have been written by Christopher Isherwood and his lover, Don Bacardi. <laughs> I didn't know that at the time. You know, but I became uh, oddly interested you know, this, in the, the TV as, a, as my despondency went along. You know, and so that scene comes in the movie where there's the monster all wrapped up, you know, and the scientist is given all the jolts of energy, and then the monster comes alive. You know, it's the big number where life is is provided by human nefarious means, you know, an imitation of God. You know, whoa. So what kind of cheap tools are they going to provide them? You know, that can get my curiosity going. It's slightly enough in my despondency to peek out of the corner of my eye and see. So I was watching the, the story, uh, and the monster was wrapped in a long, mummy-like bandage, you know, this kind of thing where you just unroll it, unroll it, unroll it, and you know, so you get a lot of drama out of it. So that's what's going on. The doctor sets up to this mummy creature, and he's like, rolling, 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 and then, you know, what kind of scrunchy, boring makeup are they going to show, you know, because I hate cheesy makeup, you know, they always tell us the worst of them, you know, it's this hunky guy, it was like a smock, is that old, this hunky guy, no makeup, he was a hunky, good-looking kid, and it kept on rolling, and he's not wearing any clothes. <laughs> That's a mind fuck. I was completely mind fucked by that. Yeah, I'd never had such an experience like that. And that like blew me away. I was totally despondent. But suddenly I completely forgot about my despondency. I was so fucked by this. So I don't mean in the bad sense, you know. It's like Don McCarty and Christopher Richard would fuck me good, good with their production of this at the right moment. I was really right for it. Uh, and that was really great. It was a, it was a fabulous turn on because suddenly it was as if uh, um, uh, 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 both who I was and what I desired was not what I had thought it was, not what, not what I felt it was. Uh, but from an inner experience, something I became, I, I had like an inner experience. It jolted me into an inner experience. Uh, and uh, I experienced. Uh, uh, the figure that I imagined as so ugly was this beautiful figure, okay, uh, is like, uh, well, that's a kind of object that I might desire. That's a kind of guy that I might desire. Uh, and if I desire that kind of guy, but uh, I don't picture him as an outer guy now, I picture him as an inner guy, okay. He, that he, that inner guy, is going to say, I love you. And who am I to be loved? Who am I to be loved? And when I felt that from this inner voice to me, uh, 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 I, 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 it was like a revolution of my existence. I discovered uh, uh, um, uh, 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 what, reality could we, what reality could be way beyond what I had known before through that, that, this kind of experience. Uh, it easily led to the way to imagine a whole new kind of master's thesis and so that I could graduate, and but it was much more than that. It was uh, uh, I wrote a whole big text about it, of which the messages was like one chapter of it. But even that wasn't what it was about. Uh, uh, it was uh, getting in touch with what is beyond the physical, and much more than an intellectual sense. It was like being gotten, not even being touched by the other side, but being grabbed or taken by the other side in the way where I could still be aware of it. I'd never experienced anything like that. 
up till that point. It was like much more than a shock to discover what later uh, I, I would understand Carl Jung to call like the objective psyche, the autonomous psyche, meaning um, uh, that there's this quality of um, um, a separate point of view that's autonomous of the ego's point of view in subjectivity, in the experience of subjectivity, or to the extent one can be present in this experience of subjectivity. I'd never experienced that before. That, that was like so amazing in what it brought about. I wanted to follow that from then on. I didn't want to follow mortal things anymore. And I had, after that experience, I had a little series uh, that only allowed me to then graduate. I didn't want to follow my graduation with, I could get a license, I could have practiced an MFT if I wanted to, you know. I, to my knowledge, I, I had the first uh, master's degree ever created in, in gay clinical and community psychology. That was the, the, my um, uh, area of expertise. I could have gotten a, 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 a license and made money, but instead I went the opposite way. I was so taken by this spirit that I, gave, I wanted to work on this whole new way of understanding it, which eventually became this essay called Visionary Love. And I wrote these two sequels, and then eventually I turned it this, into this book. It was in service of the spirit that I had experienced. At first I thought the spirit was, was this idea of it that I, was, I, 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 I wanted to get a way to handle it. So I call it the double. But later on I was able to see that this idea that I had of the double was itself an interesting phenomenon, the double, but not this love, turn on, yum yum quality per se, that had its own validity. So I had to go further than, than this idea of the double, okay, which is another set of talks to, to, to explain that to you in terms of Jungian theory uh, as a, uh, an alternative to the anima, the anima, the anima is homosexual. Uh, so, uh, anyway, uh, by the time uh, uh, I got hit, uh, pulled in this direction more and more and more, uh, I wanted to dedicate myself to it only. So, whereas before I had been gay affirmative, I now wanted to become more than that, or I wanted to find where that would take me if, if it was given the voice to show me. Or then me as this ego or this conscious identity was going to do that where it was going to go to. And that's what happened then in terms of uh, 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 the, the, the function that I wound up, was pulled under this traditional thing that happens to people become shamans in traditional cultures. You don't look to be the shaman, you know. You might have been, so to speak, you had the potential to be it, but something pulls you that way from the spirit world. You, it, you know, Frame is the call. You get called. So I felt a call. This experience that I had, long enough of the scene on the television, um, that had this meaning to me. It kept lasting. It didn't end with the TV show. It's like it was independent of the show I'd seen. It was in me. It was this thing in me, this truth in me. And it was issuing a call to me. And it kept calling and calling and calling. And only my service to it answered it. Otherwise, I was rendered restless. So in that year, 1975, instead of, like I'm saying, I got this degree and I could have been, but I didn't. Instead, I wanted to become a shamanic student or alchemistic student of this spirit being, being that I experienced calling to me. And that whole world. Uh, and I wanted to be educated in that. I had to do that step by step. That didn't happen automatically overnight, or suddenly I could know all this stuff. Or now I'm a great master in things, or a student of things. And I wanted to learn more and more about that, and then I wanted to be able to convey that in the ways I would be a, a, an organizer with other gay organizers in terms of events that we would put on and stimulate that in other folks. And it's also that led to me writing these essays same idea. Uh, to get you in the mood, I want to read to you the introduction I then wrote after the essays to give you the full feeling and flavor 
of uh, a world that is now does not exist uh, uh, for whatever you take it as. You discuss that. See how you react to this. 